Hello class, welcome to the next video in uh, the first week of lecture material and in this video we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, how the actual programming process works and also explain how things are sort of set up. In greater detail we're going to explain in greater detail how things are actually set up in this program called Spider that we've been using. So uh, to start off with I'll go ahead and mention what exactly the idea is behind uh, the program that we're using. So if you think about uh, computer code. If you think about the uh, sequences of ones and zeros, that's basically what computer code is. Uh, computers just basically receive a sequence of ones and zeros that just tell them how exactly or what exactly they're supposed to do and when they're supposed to do it. And that all the all those ones and zeros are not very readable to the human eye. So it's nice if we could use some sort of program that can take stuff that's readable to a human and then convert the human readable stuff into something that the computer can understand. So the term for a program that does that is uh, usually a compiler. A compiler is used to refer to any program that takes something that's human readable or readable to the human eye and converts it into something that the computer can understand, something that the computer can actually uh, do something with, it can act on it. So that's the kind of program that Spider is. And the way that you uh, the way that you can actually work with Spider is in this uh, window here on the left hand side or in this pane on the left hand side here. Uh, this is what is sometimes referred to as the editor window, and that's where you put all of your human readable stuff in uh, as part of your program. So that's where you're going to go about the actual process of writing your programs. And we already have a program written here, which isn't going to do a whole lot of exciting stuff, but it is going to sort of demonstrate what exactly is going on here. And then over on the right-hand side here, I have what's referred to as the console. And this is basically where the output or the result of your program is going to appear. So if you're going through the process of writing, say, something more complicated, you say you're writing a very complicated program that does some task, and then once it's done completing that task, it will print out whatever results or display whatever results you told it to display, and those results will appear in the console over here on the right-hand side. So in this case, we only have a program that's simply demonstrating a print statement. And print statement is a pretty basic place to start with. And the way that the print statement is structured is we have uh, the word print. Uh, make sure that's all lowercase. If that's uppercase, that actually is not going to work at all. So make sure when you go to type this out, make sure you type this out in all lowercase. And then followed by a set of parentheses and then a set of quotation marks. And the way that this is going to work is whatever appears inside the quotation marks, that's what the computer is actually going to display in the console when this program runs. So print statement is just a way of the just a way of telling the computer, I want such and such information or text displayed to the console when you go through that part of the program. And as a general rule of thumb, uh, there's actually a pretty uh, set structure on how the computer is going to interpret things. So whatever appears toward the top, so you see on the left-hand side here, you see these numbers. Those are in fact line numbers. And this is a very useful reference because whatever appears toward the top of the program will be run before whatever appears below it. So up here at the very top on the very first line, that's going to be the very first thing that the computer is going to try and do. So in this case, it's just going to print out hello class. It's going to do that before anything else that appears below it. So the computer runs, the computer's programming will run from the top line all the way down to the bottom, and it will strictly adhere to that order. So whatever appears toward the top here will be run first, and whatever appears toward the bottom will be run towards the end. And here I have a print statement that looks pretty similar, except here instead of using double quotes, I'm using single quotes. And one of the nice things about Python is you can use both double quotes and single quotes as long as you're consistent about it. So in this case, you cannot have, if you uh, have a double quote here as part of the print statement, then the closing mark has to be another double quote. And in fact, if you were to try and mix and match stuff, you would get these lovely messages that appear in the console, which are error messages, which are probably not what your end goal is going to be. But uh, it will basically, if you get an error message, it will say what the error actually was. So in this case, this is EOLOL scanning string literal, which is just a really bloated and fancy way of saying that you messed up here. So uh, you, in this case, we put a single quote where the, per, where the uh, compiler was expecting a double quote to be. So we'll go ahead and fix that. But if we want to run this program to see what exactly it, do, it will do, so here it's going to act on this first print statement, which will just simply print out hello, comma, class with the exclamation mark. And this print statement will do the exact same thing. The only difference between the two is here I'm having 
uh, a double quote as part of the print statement. Here I have a single quote as part of the print statement. But if you want to see how this actually comes into play, you can see when I go to run this program, again, I run it by hitting the green triangle. You can see if I go over to the console, you can see we got the two messages that we told the computer to print out. So now you might be wondering what's uh, all this stuff down here on line five and below. Uh, this little hash symbol, uh, sometimes referred to as uh, a number or I think even a pound sign, sometimes it's called, uh, that basically denotes a comment. And the way that this works is this can allows you to put stuff in your program that the computer will in fact ignore. So anything that appears after the hash symbol is going to be completely ignored by the computer. It's going to be completely ignored by the compiler. And this can allow you to put commentary in your program, but this can also be a very powerful uh, tool for the process of debugging. Uh, debugging is basically the process of taking a program that is doing uh, not what it's supposed to do, not what you intend to do, going through and figuring out why the program is not doing what you want it to do. So that's the process of debugging. It's going into a program that's not working the way you want it to and trying to find out why it's not working the way you want it to. And using these hash symbols as a debugging tool is something that's actually really powerful because you can use it to disable certain parts of your program without deleting certain parts of your program. So in this case, I could disable the second print statement down here by putting a hash symbol in front of it. And you'll see when I go to run this program now, I only get one hello class. And the reason why is because this print statement is still active. But by putting the hash symbol in front of this print statement, I've told the compiler I don't want this statement interpreted. I don't want it to actually do anything with that. I want it to ignore whatever appears after the hash symbol. So you can do this to put commentary in the programs that you write, but you can also use it to disable parts of your program without deleting uh, key statements that you might be using later on. And just to sort of verify a point that I made earlier, um, since these two print statements are doing the exact same thing, how do we know that this print statement really is running before this print statement down here? So here I'll go ahead and change this bottom print statement to something else. something like that. So if what I said before was in fact true, then we should see hello class appear in the console first, and then immediately after that we should see you must construct additional pylons. It would be awesome if I could get it to speak that in the Protoss executor's voice, but unfortunately that is a bit of a limitation here. But you can see we do in fact get that result that we expected from earlier. So again, I also made a point about how this print has to be in all lowercase, and Python is what's referred to as being case sensitive, which means the case of the letter, whether it's lowercase or uppercase, is actually very important. And I can demonstrate that by if I try print in all uppercase, it's going to say name print is not defined. It was expecting this to be in all lowercase, and since it wasn't, it gave us this lovely error message. So now that I've gone back and fixed that, we can see this does in fact work. And all it takes is one character to be out of place for the entire program to just stop working. So, And that's one of the joys of programming computers is all it takes is one small detail that's just out of place and the computer can just flat out refuse to do what, anything at all. So that's just a fun little thing about comp uh, programming. Everything's got to be in perfect working order in order for the computer to actually give you the result that you want. And sometimes, uh, sometimes the uh, problem can be just something as simple as a quote being incorrect or even a parenthesis being dropped. And one of the nice things about forgetting to close a parenthesis is it will actually tell you the errors on the next line below, which can be kind of confusing. So if it's saying invalid syntax on a line that looks like it has valid syntax, check the line above it and make sure that you didn't forget to close a parenthesis somewhere. So that's going to do it for this uh, next segment on uh, Python. So here we just took a look at some basic print statements. And that's going to be the topic for the next several segments as well. So in the next segment, we're going to talk a little bit more about print statements and some of the other stuff that you can do with them. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.